Okay, welcome back to another video in our short series looking at theory of the firm. Let's just spend a few minutes revising, looking at a range of pricing strategies that firms might use in their particular markets. Indeed, if I was to ask you to identify some of the main pricing objectives, pricing strategies that firms might use, I wonder what you could come up with. You might want to press the pause button on the video, uh, maybe jot down, can you get three different pricing strategies that firms might use? Let's have a look at some. Uh, of course, the theory assumes that firms aim to maximise profit. So single price profit maximisation is, is assumed in theory, but we know in reality that it's highly unlikely that firms will be pure profit maximisers. In many ways, if you think about IKEA, for example, typical IKEA store has well in excess of 12,000 different products. It's highly unlikely that every single product is priced um, accurately and uh, you know, dynamically to, to maximise profit. It just doesn't happen. So any firm with market power, of course, can engage in price discrimination. Now, we have a whole series of separate videos, just Google on, on YouTube, uh, choose to do price discrimination. And we've got some videos on, for example, first degree discrimination, where firms try to charge each individual consumer a different price. Very interesting examples there. Second and third degree, which we'll look at in a second or two, is where you segment the market and you charge a price based on people's willingness and ability to pay and the elasticity of demand. Three and four interesting limit pricing. Limit pricing is where firms uh, lower their prices typically to make life tough, perhaps even commercially unviable for a new rival or a new product entering the market. So you're prepared to, to sacrifice some short term profit in order to deter market entry and then build your profits up in the long term. Predatory pricing is illegal under competition law, but it's very hard to prove. And this is where you often price below your cost below average cost. In other words, you're willing to make a loss, the aim of which is to inflict some commercial damage on a rival, on an existing rival, and perhaps force them out of the market to give you more monopoly power. Import dumping is, a, is an example of predatory pricing. There are a few examples over the years. I'm sure you can Google search them, but it's very hard to prove, although it is illegal. Uh, marginal cost pricing for allocative efficiency. That's often the case with public services where the price may be set towards the marginal cost of supply designed to bring more consumers into the market. That might involve making a loss, but it does, uh, it does increase consumer surplus. And we typically associate it with state-owned enterprises or public service businesses. And some businesses just uh, operate simple rules of thumb. They, they work out what their average cost is or their unit cost. And then they add a they add a a, a, a profit, um, so it's basically average cost pricing where they work out the cost and then they add a what's called the profit markup, linked to their estimated elasticity of demand. So when when demand is priced inelastic, typically you can charge a higher markup. When demand is more price elastic, you probably go for sales and volume rather than making a big profit per unit. From the point of view of the exam. As long as you're aware that different firms have different pricing strategies and the idea there's a just a single strategy profit maximization is one to uh, be careful of you see most firms are profit seekers but i would argue few firms are single price rational profit maximizers because the strategies must reflect the complex world in which we live market structures are always changing businesses are complex messy uncertain world if you understand your oligopoly theory for example you know that you have to take into account the likely reaction of other firms in the market macroeconomic conditions change i'm recording this in 2021 as hopefully we're coming out of the of the recession induced by the pandemic some businesses of course are going strong on technology using algorithms uh you know surge pricing engaged by companies such as delivery and uber of course, that gives firms more opportunity to engage in price discrimination. So pricing strategy is, is more complex than we think. Price discrimination, here's the diagram showing on the left hand side, fairly price sensitive consumers. We're assuming the same cost, by the way, for each each market. So you tend to charge a lower price, in this case, P1 in the left hand market, where consumers are price sensitive compared to on the right hand side, 
where demand is more price inelastic and therefore you can charge a higher price and make a higher profit. Third degree discrimination based on price elasticity of demand. And things like peak and off-peak pricing. Here we have, for example, the demand for, it could be, I don't know, leisure centres or ski resorts or whatever it is, or theme parks or zoos, whatever it is. Demand at off-peak times tends to be low and fairly elastic. Firms have lots of spare capacity, so they'll charge a lower price. Whereas at peak times, demand supply is becoming more inelastic. Demand is higher. People are willing to pay more and uh, you charge them a, a, a much higher price. So peak off peak pricing, second degree price discrimination is a great strategy to be aware of. Well, this diagram is brilliant because it shows all of the key objectives and prices in one diagram. So Q1 is profit maximization. Q3 is revenue maximization. Q4 is sales maximization. And Q, Q2, uh, is satisfying somewhere in between where you choose the price and output where you make a profit but not necessarily the best profit you could make. I think the key point, the key point here is that the objectives of the firm will influence their pricing strategies and often the pricing strategies then affect the outcomes in markets from the point of view of things like consumer surplus, economic efficiency and social welfare. So in theory of the firm it's a great idea ahead of exams and assessments to be really confident. If you like, you only need to smash these diagrams. They can become a big help to you to get absolutely top marks. Talking of top marks, in the fourth and final video of this series, we're going to work through eight past multiple choice questions from recent years. Great chance for you to have a go at them on the video, and then we'll work through the answers together.